Hello, Generals, and welcome back to this Friday edition of the Five Star News. I'm Jacob Morris. And I'm Mason Dodson. We're going to get you guys started with school announcements and weather. Here's Heritage Happenings with Nathan McCoy and Pierce Monroe. Take it away, guys. Thanks, guys, for an awesome intro. Now, let's jump right into some Friday announcements. Attention, students. The deadline to order your yearbook is approaching. Place your order online at joshtons.com by April 30th. Next up, baseball will play at Cedartown tonight, starting at 5. Come out and support your Generals. Hey, juniors and seniors, prom is tomorrow night. The event will take place at Collinsville Commons beginning at 7 p.m. and will last until 11 p.m. Who's all excited? Now, let's get you over to Pierce for your weekend weather forecast. Thanks, Nathan, for those great announcements. Now on to your weekend weather forecast. Today, it will be partially cloudy with a high of 83 and a low of 54. Saturday, it will be sunny with a high of 84 and a low of 56. And for Sunday, it will remain sunny and there will be a high of 84 and a low of 60. Who's excited for all this warm weather coming our way? Now, let's get you back to our anchors for more news. Thanks for that report, you guys. Great job, as always. And the students and staff just wrapped up a pretty big week here at Heritage. That's right. It was Mental Health Awareness Week. Lots of the staff and students came together and participated in events throughout the week for mental health awareness. That's right, Mason. How'd this week go? Here's Five Star News supporters Owen Bryant, Sammy Hall, and Seth Futch with more on the report. I think it went really well. Um, a lot of students um, enjoyed the activities that we did. I've seen students with their bracelets that we've made, the stress balls we've made. I know everyone enjoyed the donuts. So I think it's gone well. <laughs> Uh, I do. I, I think it definitely brought out some crowds and of course people came because they heard that it was an activity for mental health awareness and I do think that people are definitely more aware of the problem and hopefully can also assist in the fight to fix it. Um, I would say, I know we gave out um, 500 donuts. Um, we made about 200 stress balls, 300 bracelets. Um, and then, of course, we have today's activity. Um, but we had a lot of students respond to the activities. Um, I might have to say Monday, <laughs> just because I think on Monday it was just so good to start the week off with just a stress ball after the map tests and stuff. It was just really good to have that little relief after testing for so long. And then just to get to meet new people while we were giving out the stress balls and letting people make them, it was just a great experience. Looks like everyone enjoyed and learned a lot this week. Now to some important information for Heritage athletes. That's right, this next story is going to be dealing with sports physicals, which start on April 27th. That's right, Heritage athletes can sign up and get their physical right at the school and taken care of, and it will be good for all of next year. Here's Five Star News reporters Brandon Hamilton with more about the physicals. Hey guys, we have uh, physicals coming up for all athletes on April the 27th at 1 o'clock. Um, strongly encourage everybody to come in and get that done. It's cheap. It's 25 bucks. It's here. Um, you'll be, it'll be good for 13 months, which means it'll cover the entire school year next year. Uh, it's just really easy to get done, um, really helpful for your coaches. So uh, get your forms, get them filled out, and then turn everything into Shelly Crow and uh, be here and ready to go on uh, the 27th. Yeah, yeah. Athletic physicals. Um Coming up on April 27th, they'll be uh, done by the Center for Sports Medicine. Uh, it's a very, very awesome opportunity for our athletes to uh, just go ahead and get their physical for the entire 22-23 athletic um, school year. Um, it's much easier if you do it here, and it's cheaper. So make sure you get your physical form filled out and turned in to your coach or Miss Crow, and uh, bring you $25 next Wednesday. Uh, the physicals, they're $25. And you're required to have them to play sports. But if you go to other doctors, they'll do the same thing, but for decent more money, I guess, or I don't really know. But it helps you play sports, and you can always get them. Uh, I think most people need to get their physicals because if you don't, you get hurt, then they can't really do anything about it. But if you get it, you can do whatever you need to. Definitely something all of our athletes need to take advantage of. Now on to band news, and Mr. Wins Jazz students competed in Cartersville earlier this week and performed in their large group evaluations. How did, how did it go? Here's Five Star News reporter Ben Inescu with more on the report. Good morning, Generals. Happy to see you today. 
Last night, Tuesday, uh, both of our jazz bands went down to Cartersville to play for our district jazz evaluations, where they play in front of three judges and get comments, criticisms, um, and ratings uh, to let them know how they're doing, how they're performing. So two days ago, the band went out to Jazz LGPE down in Cartersville, where we got to like get evaluated on our performance. And it was a really good experience just to perform in front of judges and hear what we can work on. And we got a lot of praise for it. Um, both the jazz bands got superior ratings. And we're just excited to keep improving and get ready for Moonlight Serenade. All right. So on Tuesday, the jazz bands went out to Cartersville High School and we played at the Jazz LGPE. Both bands got straight ones. Um, I feel like we did very well. Uh, it was definitely the best we played some of our music, and I think we have some good things to work on now. Congratulations, everyone. Time for a quick break, and we're going to get you with sports next. Yep, and they'll have highlights on baseball, soccer, and tennis. Stick around because sports is next. Oh, man. I really want some coffee right now. I'm just so depleted. I need some energy. Dude, you know they sell coffee every morning in the library for just a dollar. Dude, no way. Nobody's ever told me this. The Five Star Cafe even sells hot chocolate and tea, and they have a variety of flavors, creamers, and syrups, all for the small price of one dollar. Welcome into sports, everyone. Alex Anderson with you back again for sports on this Friday. Yep, and we'll start you off with state girls soccer. Our girls on the road this past Wednesday, all the way down near the Florida-Georgia state line to take on the Thomas High School girls in the Sweet 16 of the GHSA state tournament. Could our girls keep on rolling? Let's get with a match recap. So girls soccer went down to Thomasville, Georgia. We played Thomas County Central High School. Uh, they ranked ninth in the state, so pretty solid squad. Um, the girls just rose to the challenge. We played really, really well, probably our best match of the year. Um, just a real team effort, good defense, didn't give up a goal. Uh, they scored something like 70-something goals this year, and we didn't give up a single, single goal, and they gave up a couple chances. The keepers came up big with a couple saves, and uh, defense just locked them down all night. Um, we were able to put the ball in the net. Uh, had five different goal scorers. Uh, several other girls made assists, so just a really good team effort. Really proud of the girls and the progress we've made this week. Tuesday we traveled down to Thomas County Central for the Sweet 16 match. The game was on Wednesday and we won 5-0, to zero, so that means we'll travel Monday to Athens to play North Oconee for the Elite Eight. Um, yesterday was one of our strongest games of the year and I think we have a good chance on Monday and hopefully we can pull out a win. Next week we go down to North Oconee, so the defending state champs, really strong team and number one in the state. And um, so we got our hands full for sure. Played them last year, didn't go really well, but uh, we've seen them uh, last year, and then uh, this year we saw them play Northwest. Northwest gave them a good fight, so I think if we uh, play well, uh, put the ball in the net, we can uh, have a chance down there. So, you know, defending state champs, so all the pressure's on them. Um, we're just going down there to, to try to upset their little, you know, state championship, uh, you know, I think three-peat, because they've won it a couple times now. So, uh, looking forward to the challenge, and uh, hopefully have a good, uh, good match. Congrats, girls, and good luck in the Elite Eight. To tennis now, and both our guys and girls were in state tournament play earlier this week. Sure were, Anderson. Both in South Atlanta, the boys taking on Fayette County while the ladies took on the Hampton Hornets. A win for either team would place them in the Sweet 16. Here's Coach Green with the match recaps. Okay, the boys tennis team got a, a really nice win yesterday uh, down in Atlanta or South of Atlanta against Fayette County. Uh, we were the 3C going in, Fayette was the 2, so they, they were – Supposed to be a little bit better, uh, but they really wasn't uh, there yet. They're a little bit young. They had a nice team. They played us better than I thought they would, to be honest. But our guys, uh, being you know a lot of seniors and a lot of players that have played last year, uh, I think that was a big advantage for us, and we were able to win the match 5-0. Went really good. We won as a team. All of us won our matches 5-0. Uh, started off really strong, and uh, boys, uh, number two doubles of Anderson Britton and Walker Driscoll. Uh, I walked down there about five minutes into their match and asked them what the score was, and they said 5-0. Uh, 
And I was like, great, let's get this first set and, uh, you know, and then work on the second one. And they said, coach, it's 5-0 in the second set. We won the first set 6-0. So uh, they were off the court in like 10 minutes. So it's, it's awesome when one of your teams can get a win that fast and put one win on the board because then you only need two more. And uh, it wasn't long, it wasn't too much, much longer that we got our second and third wins. Uh, both our number one and two singles won uh, pretty quick. Nathan Mitten at number one, 6 2 6 0. Big win for him. Uh, I'm really excited. Uh, the boys are doing good. We got a lot to work on, but I think we can pull through and go to the Elite Eight. Uh, JT Halloran was really uh, cranking shots yesterday, and when he's on uh, with his power, He's tough to beat. Uh, he, he won in straight sets as well, so we clinched the match. And then Jed and Tanner finished up right after that at number one doubles uh, with a big win for them. They've came on strong in the past, what, two, three weeks. They've been playing really well, and uh, it's, it's a big win for them. I think they got some confidence at the region tournament, which we need it. Uh, we need them to be able to win at number one doubles. And, and Caleb Biddle at number three singles, I had not got to him yet. He played a, a little kid that was a really talented, talented young player. And Caleb's won all year. I think he's lost one match. And I didn't think he was going to lose that kid. But that kid's got some um, potential for sure. But Caleb beat him 6-2, 6-2. So big win for us. Uh, but uh, we're looking forward to either one, whoever we play. We're looking forward to it. And we're hoping we can make it back to the Elite Eight. The girls tennis team traveled to um, Hampton High School in South Atlanta to play for round one of state. Uh, the girls came out with a win. It was a very good match. We didn't seem to have a lot of trouble with the team. Um, it seems that they had a pretty weak region, so we were happy to get through with the first round of state. Um, they played hard, and now we get to travel to Savannah on Monday and Tuesday to go through with round two of state. And it was a fairly easy win. Um, all the girls did really well, and I'm very proud of them. We are on to Savannah now, and um, I don't know if it's more exciting to play tennis or just get to go to the beach on a school day. Congrats to both teams and good luck in the round of 16. On to baseball now, and Coach Beagle's boys were wrapping up their season this week as they take on the Cedartown Bulldogs. Those Bulldogs have already won this year's region title, but our boys won the first game of a three-game series this past Tuesday here at home. Let's get you over to Jake Morris, Mason Dodson, and Cooper Miyake for the recap of that game and find out what needs to happen now for our boys to make the state playoffs. Went great. Uh, we got a strong pitching performance by Zach Barrett. Um, our kids played really hard, and we got a couple of clutch hits. Uh, one, uh, one a double by Gage. The game went good. Uh, we ended up winning six one. Zach pitched a great game, one of his best games he's pitched. And we just went in. We um, hit the ball, came out swinging, scored. When they they ended up scoring, and then we ended up coming back scoring right back. Of course, it all starts on the mound, and, and Zach's been giving us a chance pretty much every every game he goes out there. Uh, the, the, the two guys at the plate got hits when you know when, when we had people on, and that kind of separated us. We just swung the bat well. Uh, we just, we knew that we were going to face a good pitcher, and we just wanted to put the ball in play and let them defend it. Well, we could get in as is, but we're going to have to need some help from other people. But if we go to Cedar Town and win one. Uh, we're in. Uh, if we win two, then we move up in the seedings. Good luck tonight, guys, down at Cedar Town. To track now, and our athletes were down at Southeast Whitfield High School earlier this week for their region tournament. Our boys and girls have had a marvelous year to this point. How did we fare at the regions? Here's Five Star Sports reporters Brandon Hamilton and Evan Wingrove with the answers. Hey guys, this is Coach David Gibson, head track coach here at Heritage High School. Uh, just coming to you with some uh, uh, information about the region track meet and the success that we had uh, there the last couple of days down at Southeast. Uh, it was a great meet, uh, a little cool on uh, Tuesday, but uh, Wednesday warmed up pretty good and our kids showed up. I mean, we had a great time, great effort out of all competitors. We did have two region champions, Ava Morris. Ava more son, excuse me, in the uh, uh, d girls discus, uh, had a, a personal record throw and, and was also crowned region champion. Um, we had Colin Black in the boys 400 meter run, um, ran a 52 something, and but it was the best time in the region, it was fantastic. Um, tremendous effort uh, on that race against some solid competition. So we had a track meet at Southeast, the region meet, and we had two people Place first, me and Ava Morrison, and 21 people are going to sectionals, and we're going to carry on 
the great winning spirit at sectionals. And We also had uh, several other qualifiers. We actually have 21 of our track athletes that are headed to uh, the sectional meet now because they qualify by placing in the top four uh, in their event uh, at Regions. So we also have in boys' discus, Rhett McDonald, uh, girls shot, Ava Morrison, uh, girls high jump, Harper Karstens, and Her Caroline Hamilton. Uh, boys high jump, J.D. Black. Girls pole vault, Caroline Hamilton. Girls 100 meter, um, Aaliyah Rogers, and Aaliyah is also going in the 200 meter. Um, the boys 300 meter hurdles, Brandon Hamilton. Girls 400, Zandy Burton. Um, Justin Lee also qualified, uh, finishing third in the boys 400. Uh, the girls 4x100 relay team of Aaliyah Rogers, Harper Carstens, Riley Kokenda, and Kylie Campbell. Uh, the boys 4x200 relay team of Drew Bradley, Justin Lee, Will Jones, and Pastor McCrary. Uh, the girls 4x400 um, relay team of Abby Scott, Kylie Campbell, Malia McKibben, and Zandy Burton. And the boys, uh, 4x400 relay team of Justin Lee, Will Jones, Isaiah Bryant, Colin Black, and Ethan Purple. So really looking forward to the competition. Uh, sectionals will be Saturday, May 7th, down at Central High School in Carrollton. Um, so we're going to uh, train the next two weeks, try to get ready for the uh, uh, event so that we can uh, move on to state. At sectionals, uh, they're the top eight finishers from sectionals uh, we'll move on to state. So it's going to be exciting next few weeks for the track program. Uh, cannot be more proud of our team's effort at uh, region. We finished fourth with both, both teams, boys and girls. Uh, and boys had to have a strong finish to move back into fourth. So I uh, was really pleased with that. Our girls team, um, we had a very low numbers this year with our girls team, so we weren't even able to field uh, two of the relay teams. So we didn't compete in two events and still were able to come in fourth. So outstanding job by those young ladies. Um, could not ask more out of those folks and just really pleased with their efforts and looking forward to see what they do at sectionals and state. Congrats to all you athletes out there and good luck at state. And finally to the spring three-point shootout. Yep, Coach Bryant's tourney started last week, and there's already been some surprises. Sure have, and a ton of those close games as well. Here's Five Star Sports reporters Charlie Williams and Brody Irvin for the tourney update. Okay, our uh, three-point shootout is advancing along uh, at a good clip. Um, we've had some good games, we've had some bad games, some great shooters, some not so good shooters. So, uh, yeah, it's it's moving along. Uh, had a, a great game the other day, Alex Badwell and. Uh, Jacob Lozano, and they went on the last second shot. Good crowd in there. Everybody went crazy, but they went on their last second shot right before the other team's ball went in. So that was one of the better games of the of the tournament so far. But uh, so I came to this year's three point shootout, uh, spring shootout. Last fall they had one, and I was injured. So me and Jacob had to bounce back this year, and I had to carry him a little bit. I made the last three shots and we were down. And I mean, I, it's just nothing at this point. I mean, they know I'm the best shooter here and I don't even play basketball. They should have put me on the team. So, I mean, it's, it's light work. I mean, who's, who's my next op opponent? Yeah, I don't even know. I mean, it doesn't matter. I'm going to win no matter what. 1-0, championship made. So uh, yesterday, uh, Dr. Shipley and myself, um, we're a team in the three-point contest. And so we had our first round game and we're getting absolutely hammered. And then we kind of got on the streak, thought we were coming back, and then lost it at the end. But uh, anyway, I guess a good experience. I hate to lose, but on the other hand, we had a good time, and we're in the loser's bracket, but we have a chance to win our way back because, you know, two middle-aged men are probably going to actually come back and, and win this thing. But anyway, we'll have fun in the process. Thanks for sports, you guys, and now on to some entertainment. That's right, and we've got another edition of HHS Cool Rides lined up for you guys. Here's Noah, Shane, and Braden.
Hello everyone, Mr. W here. Um, this next episode of Pimp My Ride. I'm here to tell you about my ride. It is a 2022 Hyundai Tucson. I bought this last year. Everyone knows that uh, buying domestic is whack. That's why I went with the Hyundai Guatemalan company make the finest of vehicles. It's white. It also has other colors. Um, some key features about this vehicle that um, caused me to select it uh, first it is a hybrid. As everyone knows that fossil fuels are whack. I'm all about the environment and um, I like the way it makes me feel superior to other people on the road. Another feature I love about this ride is uh, the bike rack on the back. As you can see here, drop it down, carries two bicycles. It also has a nifty, um, if you can see here, a bottle opener in case while you're riding mountain bikes you want to drink beers. Uh, also it doubles as a, a drying rack for towels and deer. I never really used it for that reason, but I can see it happen. As for the interior, I went with the black interior, mainly because it was my only option. Also, because everyone knows that black is not whack. And notice too that inside I've got a rearview mirror, moonroof, glove box, which I don't think is accurately named, because no one puts gloves in there. I have never seen a pair of gloves inside a glove box. Also, got my stick of vanilla in case I ever need to make a cupcake on the road. I've got it there, all natural, organic. It's the only way to go. So I've got a steering wheel here, push button start, and chopstick, which came with the vehicle. Moving on now, we haven't heard from my favorite segment in a while, but it looks like we have a new story time with Ian. What's in store for us now? Let's find out. So a couple months ago, I was in I was in math class and I was taking this really hard test. I did the best I could, but when I came back the next day to see what grade I got, I had failed it. No! Eventually, I just went to the teacher and said, "Hey, look, is there any like extra assignments I can do for like to get some extra credit?" And then she says, "Hmm, this is a very hard test to me take, but there is something you can do." She said, go get this old textbook, and so I went and looked for it, and when I got in there, it was this big room full of all sorts of old equipment I had never seen before. I then looked around for the textbook. I didn't end up finding it, but then there was this just ominous chair sitting in the middle of the room, and I looked at it, turned it around, and it was labeled time chair, and I was like, what? That's a bit, that's a bit strange. So I sat in it. What does this lever do? And then all of a sudden, I blacked out. I woke up. Oh, oh, what happened? Oh, it was crazy. It's last week? I then uh, walked back to math class and retook the test. You ready for your test? Yeah. I have another chance. And I failed again, unfortunately. So I'm like, okay, I gotta go back to this room and try again. <sighs> what time was it? And woke up again the day before, and I tried again. Nice. but unfortunately I just kept failing the test. I couldn't seem to get it right. I tried this over and over and over again. And then finally I'm just like, you know what? This is not gonna work. So I stopped. I give up. I can't do it. A couple days went by and my friend was complaining to me about like, oh. I just failed that big science test. Do you know any way I can raise my grade? I may know a way. Come on, follow me. I brought him there and I let him use it. And then I left. Dang, it's been like a month since I've seen Benji. 
hope he's okay. Have you been in here this whole time? And apparently he kept using the chair over and over again. It was making him insane. I'm tired of this insanity every episode. Thanks, Oz. Now that was interesting. One more segment before we let you guys go today. If you guys are eating out somewhere soon, don't decide that destination without watching this week's edition of Britain and Bedwell's Belly Review. Where are they reviewing this week? Let's find out. I'm Anderson Britton. And I'm Alexander Bedwell. And welcome back to Bedwell and, and Britton's Belly, Belly Review. Review. And today, we're going to be reviewing Teriyaki of Japan number two. Mm-mm-mm. So today, I'm going to be talking about Teriyaki of Japan number two. It's located downtown Ringgold. Uh, number one is in East Ridge. Never been, but I know where it is. And uh, number two's got a lot to offer for very little price. You know, it's a it's a hibachi place with pretty good quality food, pretty good service. Never too crowded in there. It's a good little spot that no one really knows about, and you get a lot of food for a little amount of money. So I would recommend it. So teriyaki of Japan number two. It's a once a month type of deal. I don't really go there too often. It's kind of just a, I'm not really feeling anything else. So we'll like sometimes just go there. But I really like Teriyaki Japan number two. It's not well known. A lot of people know, like there's never really anybody there in the lobby. So the service is quick and there's always one guy back there making the food. So I'm always happy with the food. And then the food quality, it's always about the same. There's Nobody that really undercooks the chicken or anything back there. And so the rice is always good. The chicken's always good. And then their drinks are always good. So nothing really to complain there. And then the price, you can get $7 worth of a big plate of rice and chicken that could probably feed you for about two days. And so, yeah, overall, I'm going to give Teriyaki Japan a 9 out of 10. On a scale from 1 to 10, I'll give price. I'll go 10 out of 10. Quality of food, give me 7.5 out of 10. And then give me service, I'll go 8.5 out of 10. So overall, I'll give Teriyaki of Japan number 2 about a 8.5 out of 10. Thanks for tuning in to Bedwell and Britain's Belly Review. Until next time, eaters. And now wrap up this Friday edition of the Five Star News. And we'll be back next Tuesday with more reports. But until then, stay classy, Heritage. <laughs>